everybody. Oh, okay, there you go. How are you guys doing? Be awesome. Um, does anybody want to open up in prayer? <laughs> sure. Sure. Go anybody. ahead, John. <laughs> okay. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you again for another opportunity that you've given us that we may come together as this Accelerate Tribe, Lord God, to hear from you. And we thank you uh, in advance, Lord God, for what you have laid on Natalie's heart to share with us that we may grow in grace and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ, that we may hear a word from you, Lord God, that will indeed uh, continue to propel our businesses to bless your holy name, because it's all about you, Lord God. And oh, that we would be a witness for you, Lord God, in everything that we say and everything that we do. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you now. Bless Natalie in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Thank you. Okay, so to get started, I was praying um, to God about, you know, what you want me to talk about, you know, oh, last minute. I feel like I only do that, but maybe some relate. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, Lord, tomorrow I present. And um, he says so loud, um, self-discipline. That, and I was like yesterday morning time. And so the whole time, you know, my flesh was like, okay, let me search the Bible for self-discipline. You know how you could type in words in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And there's like only one scripture that says the self-discipline and it's in the, it's in another translation. You know, the scripture um, you mentioned just since uh, um, often like how God doesn't give us a spirit of fear, mm -hmm. but a spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. Mm -hmm. In one translation, they put self-discipline for mm -hmm. sound mind, mm -hmm. which is like, which is like not something you would think of. Like I, my, I don't think of sound mind translating to self, to self-discipline, mm -hmm. but I guess as you look deeper into what self-discipline really is, you can see that it has, you need a self sound mind for self-discipline, but yeah. Okay. So further down my journey, um, God said threshing floor. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with, with the, what a threshing floor is, but I guess the people, I don't really know that much either, but <laughs> <laughs> when the, um, <laughs> those people who cultivate wheat, right, they put it all on the threshing floor, on the actual floor, and then somebody comes in and separates the wheat from the, there's another word that's not. The tear. What is it, Pastor? <laughs> yeah the tail. Oh, yeah okay then. so so it may it brought me to the scripture in matthew 3 12 so that's gonna be our first scripture that we're gonna go into today and oh sorry the title that god gave me was reignite your light amen reigniting your light so yeah so matthew 3 12 i'm gonna read out of the niv it says and this just a little um precursor that this is when John the Baptist was going around telling everybody to repent and that somebody's coming after him with sandals that he is not unworthy to untie. And then he goes on to say, his winnowing fork is in his hand and he will clear his threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the barn and burning up the shaft with unquenchable fire. There it goes. That's the word, the shaft. <laughs> yes. So, and he's talking about Jesus, that Jesus is coming to do this. And, and it's easy to like read past that, you know, but when you really like meditate on it, he's doing that with us, even on earth. I know he's do, he's going to do that when he comes back the second time and judgment day comes, we're going to be thrown into fire. Well, not us, you know? <laughs> but some <laughs> the ones that are not on point might be, I don't know, but, but God put it on my heart, like when he comes to sift us like wheat, how will we be found? And, and like when you're a Christian, at least for me, I'll speak for myself. Sometimes I get so comfortable in my walk that like, I may not always notice immediately when I'm slipping off, you know, when, when my light is dimming and, um, I don't want to be found like that. And, and I'm trying now at like the new year to make it a point to do self-examination like like am I do I have pride in me this week like maybe do like a daily work or or do am I being a little bit if am I not loving or you know going through our checklist you go write it down yeah so God 
emphasize that there's a need for self-discipline throughout his people because now he's calling a lot of us or all of us higher and deeper maybe what we've been doing in 2022 is not going to be enough god is doing a new thing that means that we have to come new that means we have to switch up the way we pray we switch up the the amount of hours we give like just into talking about the time we we um tithe into the lord so of course we lean on god he is our source but we also have free will and we must execute um and continue to stay disciplined by ourselves like that's our own effort to mm -hmm. there's things that the lord blesses but it takes our effort we are co um co-creators with the lord mm -hmm. uh there's a lot of times that we wait on blessings and it's god's waiting on us to make the move mm -hmm. so i did some research in the word discipline and and i found that it's same to disciple you know i mean mm -hmm. i'm sure everybody can see that discipline <laughs> disciple <laughs> and the root word of dis discipline specifically comes from the word, the Latin word discipulus, which means student and pupil. And so as a disciple of the Lord, we are called to follow him, right? And that's where discipline comes in with basically we study the Lord, study Jesus through his word, and we have to strive to meet him, which is, is hard, but it's possible with the Lord. Nothing's impossible with God. So that's that's our our um like our target, I guess you could say, our our image that we look to to um I don't know if that's the correct term, but you get what I'm saying. That we come that our comparison to. And not only must we learn the way of Jesus, but we must we must apply it to our lives because knowledge is one thing, but then when you apply it, it becomes wisdom and when you apply it it be you this is where your maturity comes in as a christian mm -hmm. because you can quote all the scriptures in the bible but if you're not walking in it are you really you know mm -hmm. not for me to judge but just <laughs> <laughs> um quant the quantity of years in a church doesn't make somebody a mature believer it's mm -hmm. spiritual growth it's measure off spiritual growth and um i came up with like this little list it's probably a lot more to add but three characteristics that i noticed of a mature believer are um being disciplined mm -hmm. specifically in the ways of the lord you know not just you know worldly discipline i can't count mm -hmm. that but discipline in the way of the, the lord and then holiness and i put slash striving for holiness because we'll never meet it fully and then the third one is bearing fruit mm -hmm. And I'm sure, like I said, you guys can think of more, <laughs> but so put a pin in that because I'm going to move on to another thought. The kingdom of God is actually very simple and that's why it stumbles many. Like the Pharisees in the Bible, they were expecting Jesus to, or the Messiah to come back like in a, with fire and chariots, but he came as a baby and a lot of them missed it because God is just, he does that. He uses the foolish things to confound the wise. So when you think about what it means to be a mature believer, you may feel like, or people may feel like, okay, you have to pray all day and fast all day. But really Matthew 16, 24, it's very simple. Jesus says to be his disciple, whoever wants to be my disciple, they must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me, follow me. And he does, and he doesn't mean um physically, I mean physically too, but he means follow me as in at like denying yourself, like literally copying him, mm -hmm. like being his reflection. Mm -hmm. I thought I wrote it, but I didn't write that. Okay, so <laughs> and there's multiple places in the scriptures where Jesus says, Follow me. Like I looked up follow me, and there was probably like 20 different people. He's like, okay don't bury the dead come follow me mm. don't say bye come follow me so he's he's literally going to each and one each one of us it's just because it's not documented don't mean it's not happening mm. god's coming to all of us in our own way saying follow him mm. and 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 that's all it takes to become a disciple mm. right mm -hmm. during the following that's where you become mature mm. okay so in the three in the list, the disciplined, 
the holiness and the righteous and the bearing fruit. If you look at it long enough, you start to see that it's almost like a like a a plan. Like first you become disciplined, then you will become righteous, then you will bear fruit. You start to see that it it's almost like it just happens. They're all connected, they're all intertwined. And and I and then I questioned God. I said, God, but you said works. It's not about works. Mm-hmm. And God like was like, it's not about works. You still reach salvation. You still are with me, but there's conditions. It, many times in the Bible, there are conditions. It's an if and then. A lot of statements in the Bible are if and then. I don't have an example, but I know you guys can probably think of it. <laughs> um, God, like blessings are conditional. I was, I mean, as a child of God, I don't want to stumble my words, but you know, if you don't do certain things, you won't reach certain end points, I will say. And so the Lord brought me to James 2, 17 through 18. And um, I forgot to say for salvation, it requires only faith. It does not require works, but our faith will be seen by our works. Um, in James 2, 17, in the NIV, it says, in the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds. And I will show you my faith by my deeds. And then I immediately thought about Abraham. When Abraham put his son Isaac on the altar, that's when the Lord said, okay, I credit you as righteous. So it took a faith move, a faith move of discipline too. Because if if Abraham had no discipline, he might've been like, not, you know, that wasn't God. Or, you know, he might've missed that point, that opportunity to have that faith move. And that's when God was like, okay, you're credited as, as righteous because of what he did. And Then we're going to go to James 9, 1 through 7, so we can see it in the New Testament, too. Let's see. James. Oh, I'm sorry. It's John 9. There's no James 9. John 9, 1 through 7. In the NIV, that's where I'm in today. So it says, as he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus replied, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After After saying this, he spit on the ground, made mud with his saliva and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told them, wash in the pool of um, Siloam. And so the man went and washed and he came home seeing. Jesus very, very easily could have been like, you're healed. Boom. No, but he spit on the ground and made mud, wiped on his eyes. That's a faith move. That's a faith. Because I know me, if God told me spit on, like, I don't know. (laughs) I want to say I'll do it, but I might be like, God, that's a little, no. okay. <laughs> but yeah. And, and by the way, there is a lot to eat in that passage. Like mm-hmm. reading it just now, I got like 20 revelry, but yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so discipline is required to meet these certain works. Yes. We're not going to be judged on how much we fast or how much we pray or how much we read the Bible, but that's, what's going to grow us in the Lord, grow us spiritually, get us from that milk that we've been drinking since getting baptized and giving our life to the Lord. It's going to get us into being able to eat the true. God refers to it as manna in revelations. And he's speaking, well, how I interpret it. He's speaking of the mysteries that he feeds his children. How can we eat those mysteries? We want more, but how can we get there if we're not doing the basics? Right. Mm -hmm. And and this applies to our business too. Like I was telling myself, I'm like, how do you want to be RVP? You can't even, you, know, <laughs> you can't even do the responsibilities of a senior vice or what's it called senior rep. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like you got to grow, you know, it takes, and that takes discipline. 
Mm-hmm. Especially, and that's a big thing I hear about with the new year specifically. Like everyone's saying, like I gotta work on my self discipline, but do we? I don't even know what that really looks like. You know, I had to do research to find that. <laughs> so all throughout the Bible, we're giving commands. He tells us to fast, to pray. I kind of already said at least praise and and um our spirit is willing. Like you, you could tell. Like something gets excited in you when you when you're like, okay, I'm gonna go worship or I'm gonna put on song, but our flesh is weak. Our flesh is weak. Some we're like, where's the time, God? I want to worship you nine hours a day, but how? How am I supposed to? You know? Mm-hmm. And this is where it takes discipline to crucify the flesh. Um. So I have a testimony. God has old like he's had me like fasting a lot and it was the holidays so I'm like I did a little like (laughs) I did a little um (laughs) negotiation with God I'm like God can I (laughs) I'm like let me just eat some of this right now and then I'll stop eating this like you know and he's like okay so I'm like New Year's Day I'm gonna fast three days and (laughs) every day I ate and I felt so (laughs) terrible but (laughs) <laughs> the Lord's like, okay, although it doesn't affect your salvation, I need you. I, you're missing something. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to miss anything. I say that. I'm like, no, God, I pray all the time. Please, I don't want to miss a thing you have for me. But then simple things like, okay, fast. Mm-hmm. You know, it seems simple, but it's hard. You know? mm-hmm. <laughs> it's hard. And um, and I notice it hinders my growth. My light will start to dim. And and I quickly have to remember, like, that's my own fault. Like, you know, it's nothing outside yourself. But yeah. And it hinders us from reaching complete holiness. Because like with fasting, there may be something God wants to rip out of you spiritually or teach you how to be disciplined. I know fasting a lot will teach you how to be disciplined or anything. You know, if he tells you to pray in the middle of the night, it could be because somebody's in trouble and he needs you to pray for them. Um. And then I want to go to Colossians 3 and 5 and 8. And I'm sorry if it's a little all over the place, you know. You're good. You're good, good. Natalie. You're good. You're good. You're good. Um, So Colossians 3, 5 through 8, or 5 and 8, it kind of, it's going to show that it's our job to do certain things. Um, It says in the NIV, put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. But now you must also rid yourselves of all such things as these, anger, rage, excuse me, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. I know none of us, none of us do that stuff, but <laughs> it says, <laughs> it says put to death. If you notice in, in um, verse five, put to death. Okay. And then in verse eight, it says, rid yourselves. Mm -hmm. So it's not, it's not, okay, God, I will rid them from, you No, rid ourselves. That means that it takes us, it takes us being knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Taking an examination. Am I being greedy? I am. Okay. Here, God, I put it on the altar. Mm -hmm. God will help you, but it takes us. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we are expected to do this. Um, Lakita had mentioned yesterday about the misconception of people feeling like God is a separate from us. Mm -hmm. And that's something that like God had gave me a word the other day. The light is within you. It comes from within you. Mm -hmm. You can easily, this is where the ignite yourself. You can reignite yourself with that fire. You don't have to wait till somebody come lay hands on you, lay hands on yourself, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And it comes with the consistency of discipline and, and constantly dying from yourself to pull from that source. Because if you're blocked, you're clogging it with all these worldly stuff. Like um, one thing I constantly have to uh, die to is social media because I get like lost on a rabbit hole sometimes. <laughs> I start off with godly messages, then I'm in like cooking, I don't know. And so God told me, that's something that we that takes discipline guarding your eye gates guarding your ear gates if mm-hmm. if your husband puts on a movie that that's not very clean are you gonna walk out the room or are you gonna just sit there because you know mm-hmm. that it take that takes discipline 
Mm-hmm. Especially, it takes discipline, period, to be set apart from the world. It's hard out here. I know. <laughs> and so James 1 4 is the next scripture. And it states, I'm going to give y'all time. It states, let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, lacking nothing. Mm-hmm. Perseverance. Now that requires discipline mm-hmm. to go through i was reading the scripture of jesus um when he went into the synagogue and he read the scripture uh he read from the scroll of isaiah mm-hmm. okay God, the spirit of the lord is upon me and he finished it you know and they wanted to kill him they said we're gonna throw you off this cliff jesus just walked through mm-hmm. and he went <laughs> He went on like a thug. He just kept going <laughs> about his business. And I don't know if I would do that. You know, so that t- it takes discipline. It takes discipline to act like Jesus. It takes discipline to even go in the word to act like Jesus. And I'm like a, a re- re- repeating a lot. But in our business too, I already said it, but you need, <laughs> you need to to persevere through the nose like you and sometimes it takes you sitting down having a pep talk Mm -hmm. like get back up you know I've been slacking on my business I'm be honest because of all the nose I get I'm like I'm like you know I'm just I'm like God send me somebody that's gonna (laughs) want it because I can't no more and and imagine Jesus did that like Mm -hmm. imagine Jesus gave up on us because he got Um, all those nose mm -hmm. like yeah. All that we he we would have missed out on all the blessings. So, um, yeah, and we're human. So sometimes it's normal for us to do this. Like it's it's not the end of the world, but that's where the discipline comes in to pick yourself back up. Come if on. you're on a diet and you end up binging, it's not like okay, I'm gonna just continue to eat like this the rest of my life. No, it's okay. The next day I I messed up, but I'm back on. Let's get back on. Mm-hmm. And and the dimness of our light like the 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 slight setbacks could be because of our own doubt our own um self sabotage the enemy um external circumstances um but that's where we catch it right right like we were talking about discipline get back up get back up and so i wanted to leave you guys with some like things you could do to grow your discipline I don't want to just tell you and then just like leave Mm -hmm. Um, so so ways to build discipline and it's like scientific or something it says do things like daily that your flesh doesn't want to do and it will Mm -hmm. slowly train you so some things I thought about was like instead of taking the elevator take the stairs um you could take a cold shower in the morning eat some fruits and veggies rather than a dessert at the end of your meal and I'm sure y'all could think of way more (laughs) you could think of way more you know worship instead of listening to that your R&B song you know it do one daily and then eventually things won't it won't be so hard anymore Mm -hmm. um and discipline in conclusion is taking control of our flesh Mm -hmm. and handing it to the Lord Cause we can't do nothing with our flesh once we got it. But once we give it to the Lord, that's when things start to change. Mm -hmm. How do we expect to conquer the darkness and conquer territories of our families and and everybody? If we can't even defeat ourselves, our own flesh. Come on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a fact out there that we're sometimes our number one enemy. Our mind is our number one enemy. If we can handle this person, then nothing in our way can stand in our way. But yeah, I know it's kind of short, but that's all I got. <laughs> that's good. Awesome. Good job. A fire wow, from Beverly. above. Wow. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right. All right. That's can, can, awesome. I, can I jump in real quick? Absolutely. I, like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm impatient this morning. I, I need some discipline. Lord forgive me. All right. I'm past that. Natalie, this, this was so awesome. I was um, just getting fired up in the background. You said so many things. One of the things that stuck with with me was when you said wisdom comes after application, right? I put like a parenthesis there, discipline, follow him and do what he has um, told you to do. You know, it's kind of like, um, it's kind of, it's it's like what you said, right? How can you receive the fruit if you're not going to go through the process? 
you know? And so that was a kicker to me um, because I know I, I, I got to, I got to go through a process, right? If, if I'm expecting something, I have to also expect that if I want to take that fruit out of the ground, I got to, I got to, I got to pull it up. You know, I got to put the seed in the ground. I have to water it. I have to, you know, do certain things. Right. So thank you so much for being obedient. And it did not sound like a microwave word. Right. It sounded like you were cooking it for five days. I just want to. So even when you said that, you know, it might have just came to you. I don't believe that. <laughs> I believe that it was already inside of you and God helped you to pull it up. Right. Because mm -hmm. the seed was already planted in the past. Amen. So um, acceleration. Yeah, honey. That's what that's called. Let's go. I'm right. <laughs> right. He allowed you to water it, you know, with, with, with the rivers inside of your spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for, for sharing that. And um, I just want to say you're awesome. No matter how many no's you receive, there's going to be bigger yeses down the road. So don't don't worry about it because the Lord said that this is a year of acceleration. Yes. Don't lean on the past or what you've come to know, right? Or the things that you've gotten used to. Step into your newness and expect something different right mm -hmm. so that's that's all i have to say amen amen yes miss linda. Miss, that's an sd <laughs> that's that's miss linda. <laughs> natalie let me tell you something i've learned in my old age now here at 55 i realize we want wisdom when we're young and the wisdom comes through maturity mm -hmm. and let me tell you something god um put you in front of me today because you just gave me wise words that I needed to hear. And I'm thinking, look how young she is. And <laughs> pray God that he's just speaking through you and what you said, but busting through like a thug when you were saying <laughs> that about Jesus. It was like, you caught me. And I was like, yes, I'm paying attention. Like, listen to the words that she's using. It's like, it doesn't matter. It's whatever you're saying. But boy, what you said today, I mean, a pastor couldn't even get to me the way you just did today. Amen. And I'm like, look at this little girl getting to me. I mean, praise God. <laughs> and yes, thank you for helping me understand all the no's that you have for you to say, yeah, you know, you have all those no's and you're thinking, I don't feel, I mean, everybody's telling me no, and it hurts more when it's from the warm market, mm -hmm. but to think, Maybe it's my age. Maybe if I were younger, you know, all the excuses I'll put in my, and then here you come on saying, you know, I'm kind of feeling the same thing I feel. I'm like, age has nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with it at all. So thank you. Thank you so much for this morning. Cause yeah, you definitely, thank you. You just thank gave you. me some wise, I received some wise words from a young one. So <laughs> thank you. Amen. Amen. Man, you, you're right. You are right on it, Linda. It, man, <laughs> Natalie, Natalie, I'm going to have to put that in one of my messages. Jesus, this bus through like a thug. I like that. I like that. But, <laughs> but Natalie, you know, I mean, truly, truly hear the words that you are hearing from those who are older than you. Man, <laughs> that, that was right on the money. And it's because of your, um, your desire to want to to want to do what's right in the eyes of the Lord, and I agree wholeheartedly with Sheldon. It was it was there all the time. I mm -hmm. mean, because you you have you have such a you, you have such a love and a passion for the Word of God, and 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 you're learning uh, how to need to apply it to everything that you get involved with, and it is so refreshing to me. Uh, I mean, I'm just like Linda. I mean, you know. Man, this little girl is just preaching up a storm. This is all right. And, and it's refreshing. That's the word I wanted. It's refreshing. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, Linda said, you know, she's in her, would you say 55, uh, 63. And I'm excited about what I just heard from this little 18 year old, you know, that, that you know, that, oh, I'm sorry, 22. Uh, okay, 22. Hey, man. But but it's it's it, I mean it's just it is so refreshing, it's exciting, and it's motivating. And the words that you spoke, you know, this touched my heart uh, as far as self because I you are right on point. You are right on point. Talking to this sixty three year old right now, you are right on point. And I thank you. I, I bless the Lord for you. Keep it keep it up, Natalie. You you got it. You got mm -hmm. it, girl. 
Amen. Amen. Mr. Dre, I see your hand up, sir. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. So I'm about to I'm about to take ownership of Natalie like she's my cousin and not my wife's cousin. <laughs> but um, but I want to tell y'all, you know, Natalie speaks, you know, like you know, once every so often. But this is Natalie. This is Natalie all the time. Every time, every time I get around Natalie, this is her. She's bubbly, she's she's on fire. This is awesome. So this is not this is not made up. This is not, you know, just make believe. This is her. Um, so a, a couple of things. Uh, so for one, I just found out that I can't listen to my R&B music no more. Thanks, Natalie. You took that away. <laughs> um, but no, so um, I heard you say the word reignite. And then I heard Sheldon say the word microwave. And so most of the people on this call, they know, you know, that brother Pastor Dre has got all these different different ways he eats and different things that he does. Um, so one thing I don't do, and I haven't done in decades, is use a microwave, right? So in order for me to eat, I actually have to cook. And we have this one, uh, is that background, is that background noise behind me? Is that me? I, I hear something, it's got, it must be something, maybe okay. echo or okay. something, but you're all right, it's all right. All right. And so in order for me to in order for me to cook, I had this one eye that I used, and I don't know why I continue to use this eye. It's the front left. And in order for me to use this eye, because it doesn't come on when I cut the when I cut the stove on, I have to reignite it every time. Every time I have to eat something, I have to reignite this eye in order for me to get nourishment because I just refuse to use a microwave. And so that's that's I guess my self-discipline tip for everybody today. You know, think outside the box. Um, like Natalie said, you know, what we did in 2022, it might require more in 2023. What we thought was enough, well, we might have to do just a little bit more. I have a, I have a, um, a great RVP, SVP, all these letters that Don says, and she has, she's done this exercise with us where she asked all of us to, to stretch our hands out and then everybody will lift their hands and then she'll say, we'll stretch a little higher. And then we can stretch a little higher because initially we just, Put our hands up. We didn't think to put our hands up as high as we possibly could. So, you know, piggybacking off of my cousin, not my wife's cousin, my cousin, Natalie, <laughs> piggybacking off of her word today, go deeper, mm-hmm. go move, move forward just a few more steps, go a little bit deeper every day um, and go get what's yours, man. Love you guys. Amen. 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 Awesome. 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 All right. Who else wants to share something today? I'm trying to be patient. Okay. Uh-oh. Okay, go, Chris. Go ahead, Chris. Oh, okay. You know, um, one thing that you said, Natalie, was that growing takes discipline. And this is just the way my brain works, y'all. I was thinking about the human body and how I, and I'm actually taking this literally as the idea that our bodies grow, mm-hmm. which means that there's a certain discipline involved there mm-hmm. and you t- also talked about um you said something about um the change of habit is something you have to do daily i'm thinking again about the human body our heart beats daily i mean every day these processes happen and and the way that i kind of um brought this thought to my mind is that oftentimes we think about discipline as being something difficult you know, I think about the challenges I have about my business and stuff I know I should be doing every day. But then it brought me back to that statement that growing takes discipline. This is something that's already embedded in us. The discipline is already there, mm-hmm. you know, because we have that. And I know this might sound kind of strange. I'm trying to explain it. Um, we already have that in our flesh mm-hmm. because our heart beats every day we breathe every day these things that that go on every day is a discipline that we've already received mm-hmm. so for me mentally it's just a matter of taking the next step and moving into the area of making myself do some of the things that I need to do because it's already in me in other words that's mm-hmm. what I'm trying to say mm-hmm. I hope I explain that Yes, so ma'am. All understand it. Yes, okay. ma'am. Okay. Awesome. 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 Go ahead, Mr. Keaton. All right, I'm gonna be quick. Girl, you are bomb. I was in the car and taking mental notes, but Natalie, one thing just sent to mention yes 
today. It is so funny when she said it because I was like, I feel the same way. I just love when I hear you speak because you do, you smile. It's just, <laughs> oh, it's so contagious. But um, what I love about what you said when you talked about us being able to reignite the fire within, and that all stems from the discipline, because once we have that discipline, it's easier for us to get back, whip back in shape. And um, God's presence is all, always has been there for us. But what I love also is you talked about at times your light dims, but because of the the growth that we've had here, I can only speak about us personally for those who've been here and, and just watching each and every one of you all. God has accelerated so much deep down that we are so conditioned in utilizing our gifts that there's not even an easy way to see a light dimmed in here. <laughs> this room, this space, the energy, anytime, even if I was to pick up the phone and call any one of you all, I feel the light. And so that's already been disciplined because we have been truly using the gifts that God placed into us. And that's what I love about this call. And that's why I'm so excited that I can say that this has truly, truly saved my life. Mm -hmm. And then um, you spoke about it. Now, we most of us have been here for a while, and some of them even longer than before I came into this. But we talked about vitamin Christ. When we were doing some of those trainings, that's discipline. It might not be our regular, but when you have those alarms going off every day and you take that time just to take time and give God thanks, eventually you're doing that throughout the day before the alarm even goes off. And now it's in us, right? And that's what makes me so excited because I've got to watch it. I've got to experience it and it is such a feeling. So everything that you talked about, we've been living. And then for you to come on here and say, we got to take it up another level. Those are the realms of God. And then we learned about the Chronicle time and the Kairos time. I am so excited y'all because 2022 was awesome, but 2023 <laughs> and what we, where we are right now, where we've been disciplined and where we have our righteousness and we're bearing fruit. And Miss Anel, you spoke about it yesterday. We rooted in there. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we right down in there getting the nourishment. So we got history yesterday, moving on into today, talking about that the discipline that we've been putting forth, I'm excited to be our teammates in your presence because each and every one of you showing up here has saved me because you are, all on my Jesus that I see because he lives in me and he lives in you. So I'm excited. Thank you so much for your word, queen, your <laughs> smile. And oh my goodness, age ain't nothing but a number. But girl, when I look at you, you are, we refer to you as our baby. You know, you are baby. <laughs> Thank you for that wise wisdom. Cause that, that's your spirit. And that is God living in you. All right. I said that was going to be quick. It was a little old, but I love it. <laughs> you're good. You're good. Hey, Lakita, you sure sport that hat, girl. Man. Bad her day, but yo, I had to make you look like something. So thank you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Just it, um, before I go, does anybody else want to go before I go? All right, man. You know, uh, Natalie, again, just I love the way God just he he always sets the stage for the next thing. And, you know, what he's going to have me going in tomorrow has this is, you know, really inner times with that. And I'm so excited about his word and just the things that he's revealing and continuing to reveal. But I, you know, and I want to say this about self-discipline. Um, as, as, as he and I were having conversations about this, uh, about our connection, um, the discipline is, is really, you know, there's, I, I think there's levels as we go, like you said, I, I love the way you said, um, during the following, you become mature. You know, that maturity comes as part of the following of him. And, you know, there are times in which we have to learn to be disciplined on the smaller things, 
you know, um, just the having a time to pray in the first place. And, you know, um, the things that, that he asks us to do, like the fasting and stuff like that. And those are to the, it's kind of the prerequisite to get our body in alignment get our souls and our spirits in alignment to make sure that we are aware that we should be in tune. Right. And so then we move to this other level though, where you, you kind of got that, that that connection there and you you've got that awareness there and as he's talking about further discipline what he really is after is the is more awareness more in tune you know it's not a, a discipline from the fact of we think i think we think about self discipline you know like you said when you say it's hard we think about it as a reprimand almost you know we think about it as a reprimand but one of the things he's showing me is that the discipline is not so much about me reprimanding what you're doing. It's that I need you to always be aware of what I'm saying and what I'm doing and what I need you to do. And so it's just the awareness. So the discipline in being in tune in having the ear and he was showing me that I, I was just, you know, we we're always talking. That's the beautiful thing, you know, about the Holy Spirit. Like you're never alone. And I realized like I'm always having conversations, even though there's nobody there but me and him, right? <laughs> you know, I'm always in these conversations. And so, um, but I I realized that I have, and I never even, I didn't realize I had done this. But he was just pointing out to me how I've disciplined my mind in such <laughs> to cause a status the staff meeting. Um, yeah, but I, I've disciplined my mind to the point where I really am aware that I don't think any thought on my own. I, I, I mean, even the small things, I, I'm in a constant state of checking in with the Holy Spirit, which we've talked about in the past about how you can do that every few seconds. Your brain is really wired to be in a constant communication with the Holy Spirit. and But it is a discipline. It is a discipline. And it started out with me doing the things like we've talked about in the past of setting reminders on my phone every 15 minutes to check in with the Holy Spirit. You know, setting reminders on my phone initially it was every 30 minutes. And you know, before that every hour or until it got smaller and smaller spaces. And so those reminders would make me be aware of, am I having a conversation with the Holy Spirit to the point where now no thought is just my own. I mean, I'm constantly talking, you know, and I know that there's even when in my mind, what I think is constant, God is probably like, no, it's not really actually constant. It might feel that way, but you know, it, for me, it, I feel like it's every five or six minutes at least that we're doing that, you know, but, but what he was pointing out to me again was that was a discipline. It, it took me time to develop that pattern of communication with him and that, um, and so those kinds of things we can come higher in as we, you know, continually to make ourselves available and make sure that we are desire to be aware that we can be in, you know, what Lakita just brought back up, the Kairos moment of God at all times. And that in that space is for sure acceleration in that space is a hundred percent movement in God's timing, a hundred percent, you know? And so that's why he's asking us to come up higher in that discipline. Because if I want to do something new in you, if I want to accelerate you, I have got to, we've got to be like this all the time, all the time. And I love it that our father um, desires to just be closer and closer and closer and, and reveal himself to us in so many, he just, he gets giddy about it. I, I, you know, you just, you feel this, he's excited about it. It just tickles him to death to do that, you know, but, but so I, I, again, I know that was a lot, but I, I appreciate your word, Natalie, and your, um, you know, listening to him and your obedience in, in what you're saying. And, um, for sure, you know, we, 
I, I love the fact that you brought out, you know, what if Jesus had said there's two, Jesus went into whole towns that turned him away. We say, when we say everybody says no, it's not actually everybody. You know that, right? <laughs> you know, it's not actually everybody, right? <laughs> we want to feel like, we feel like it's everybody. And it's not actually everybody. Um, I was having even the conversation with somebody a couple, maybe a week or so ago, and they were just, you know, talking about how everybody, and I, and I said, you got two questions, answer two questions for me. Was that the last person on your list? Was that the last person in the world? If the answer to either one of those is no, okay. There's still more people to talk. There are still people, right? Jesus had to walk into an entire town that turned him away. We don't get those kind of no's. And what if after him getting that kind of rejection, he has said, you know what? It's not worth it. Man, man. What? And, and you know, that that slightest, that little what if that one little decision to go left or right changed everything for humanity? You know, and, and on a smaller scale, that's us. Our decision to continue to go where he has sent us changes everything for the humanity we are connected to. And that's important. That's important. So thank you again. Awesome word. Wonderful, wonderful message. And man, just again, excited about what God is doing. Be, 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 be on the lookout, y'all. Watch every day because he is just showing you daily more and more. You're going to see little, you know, little signs, little wonders, little, little nudges that, hey, this is a new time. I'm here. I'm moving you right along. I'm moving you right along. And it's about, this is only the beginning. This is just the beginning. So yeah, I'm excited. Miss Myra, I see you got your hand up, ma'am. Hi. Hi, hi, Jacinta. Hello, everyone. Um, I have a question because, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm fairly new on the call, but I just want to tell you all, thank you so much for inviting me to the call. Uh, this is just what I needed for my life and for my business. Um, mm -hmm. It's just been such a blessing to me and I'm not going to stop crying, start crying, mm -hmm. but um, um, the word is just means so much to me. Um, mm -hmm. This is, it's my life. It's my life. Um, yeah. Business have not been the same um, since I met you all, Amen. even though the numbers don't show, but God is doing something in my spirit, man, yes. that I know that uh, the business that he's given me and the tools in Primerica that he's given me is going to be a blessing to other people. Yeah. But my question, the question I want to ask you, Jacinta, I want to go back and listen to um, the message where you said that you all learned about how to stand connected to the Holy Spirit, you know, communicating with him on a constant basis. Do you know the exact topic of that message? Um, let me go look at the title. I'm sure it had something, but it's probably not a public one. Okay. So, okay. Um, but, okay. but you can still, I tell you what, I'll pull, I'll pull it and send it to you. And I'll actually, I, that's one I probably, I need to make public. I thank you for reminding me of that, I, I, honestly, because I, when we, when I talked about it, I said to myself, I was going to make those public because they were part of, you know, before we started doing that, but, um, uh -huh. but I'm going to pull those and, and they'll be on the playlist later today. So I'll make a playlist okay. with that. And, okay. um, right. thank you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank yeah. You. That was a topic. Honestly, I, when we started going into that, I was like, Lord, I didn't intend to do that now, <laughs> you know, like that, that was, you get a little personal, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but there was, um, man, I, I, I mean, we've, we've definitely had some great conversations and learned a lot about the Holy Spirit. And, um, you know, there was, there was even a time in which like, he's, he's, he's had us 
had me to even demonstrate there are t- there were times where we would s- s- just sit to listen you know God had us just listening on the call oh like God. he would give a small word and then you know he'd say okay now while we were all together though everybody was listening individually to what God would have to say there were times that he had me praying over the team in the spirit while they're listening and you know and that was it, it is part of his way of demonstrating because I do realize that sometimes, you know, we, we come from a lot of different backgrounds. And so everybody may not be exposed to that or under, you know, really fully grasp what we're saying when we're talking about things like the Holy spirit or praying in the spirit. And so, yeah, it, it's, um, it was a, it's a really wow. amazing, um, gosh. And, 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 you know, also, what what um what I was about to say when you were talking about that awareness, mm-hmm. you know what what I said and um, again this my own personal experience is that God is making making me aware of how I react to things, especially no's or things that don't go my way, and and because w- without the Spirit, you know we can we can we can get a little crazy. <laughs> we can, mm-hmm. we can go, oh man, uh, yeah. and all, all this and, and making the excuse. And I mean, the, you know, the examples that you were sharing, Natalie, and, and um, you know, the, you know, have you, have you spoken to everybody? <laughs> no. Uh, you know, is that the last person on your list? Uh, no. Uh, do you have a list? Okay. That's another story. But anyway, <laughs> but God is making us aware of checking in with him. And 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 seeing if we're going to learn from what you know, and you know, Jacinda and and y'all, I, I talked to y'all about my little situation on yesterday and all this kind of stuff here, but but my reaction is totally different from when I first started off, totally different. So okay, Lord, okay, what do I need to learn from this? Mm-hmm. So that that's that communication, that's being aware that there's a lesson to it. nothing that you go through good bad or indifferent that there is a lesson there that god wants you to see and i'm telling you it's going to be all right because everything from god is good and god god's going to take care of us so learn learn even through the bad time learn say lord i i must have missed something or god show me and guess what he will show you and he will teach you that's how much he loves us Mm. Oh man, I love this group. I love the. I love. Come on, uh, come on, Drake. I love this church. Glory to God. I love this church. I love this church, and you're right. And something that Natalie said, I forgot to mention this. Something that you said, uh, you were talking about knowledge, and I've always said, I've been saying this for years. People always say that knowledge is power, and I like to take that a step further by saying applied knowledge is power. Because you can have all this head knowledge, but if you don't do anything with it, then then you'll never see the power of it but if you take that knowledge that you have and you apply it to whatever that situation that needs that particular knowledge then you're the one that has the power in that knowledge so i mean power in that situation so Mm -hmm. i love (laughs) can i add to that experiential knowledge is also power Mm -hmm. right 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 that's key experience man Uh, can i can i ask a question sure um I don't know why I haven't heard from my friend Michelle Thomas. I I, I just don't know. But anyway, 